Hello, and welcome to Main Street America's Small Business Digital Trainer Series. Main Street America is helping small business owners gain new skills through a team of digital marketing experts who provide free training to small business owners across the country. Today, we will cover communicating with Calendar and Gmail. My name is Courtney Stringer, and I serve as one of the Main Street America digital coaches. We will cover how to use Google Calendar and Gmail to share important dates, reminders, and events with other people. Effective communication not only shares information with others, but establishes trust, sets the scope for your project, and defines expectations. It is also critical for improving teamwork. In today's lesson, we will create and share a new calendar, add an event to the calendar, and receive and accept invitations in Gmail. In our sample exercise, you will schedule a simple event and share the event with others. We will begin with Google Calendar to schedule the event, then move on to Gmail to communicate about the event. To complete the lesson, we'll take you through planning an event step-by-step -step and give you some tips and tricks that will make your life a little easier. Let's start creating and sharing. Do any of you have an event or meeting you invite people to or an activity or club you participate in. So take a minute and think about what something you schedule on a regular basis. Today you will pr practice these tools in context of an upcoming event, but you can apply these digital skills to many situations in your work and personal life. For example, you can use calendar to schedule an upcoming family event, a meeting at work, or an appointment. Then you can use Gmail to share the calendar, send yourself reminders, and share your calendar with family, friends, or coworkers who need to know your schedule or about your appointment. First, we need to access these applications. Let's take this opportunity to sign into your Google account. These slides show an animation of how to sign in. Open a new tab in the browser window and go to google.com. If you are not already signed in, click sign in and enter your username and password. If you don't have a Google account, you can create a free one by clicking create account on the screen. Signing into your Google account allows you access to lots of Google applications that you can use for work and at home. I'll give you a few seconds to get signed in. Signing into your Google account allows you access to all the products you'll see today. You only have to sign in once to be able to access Google Sheets, Documents, Slides, Photos, Forms, Gmail, Calendar, and lots of other applications. After you've signed into your Google account, use the Google Apps menu to move between applications. Notice that your most recently used apps appear first. Let's start planning your event using Google Calendar. Digital tools like Google Calendar make it easier to keep all of this information organized. What are some important events you would like to schedule that you need to share with others? Ball games, choir concerts, meetings, etc. What is an activity where you meet more than once that requires a regular schedule? Club meetings, after school sports, volunteering events, or weekly and monthly meetings? Select an event that you will schedule. Pick an event that would need to be shared with others more than once, such as a meeting, sporting event, or volunteering event. This is your personal calendar. If you share this calendar with your group, they will see everything you add, even doctor's appointments, family birthdays, and personal errands. That's a lot of information you probably don't need to share with other people. So you can create a new calendar allowing you to share information with a certain group. Click the arrow next to my calendars and select add other calendars. Then you will select create new calendar, as you can see here on the screen. Next, provide a calendar name. 
This could be if this is going to be your volunteer calendar or your volleyball team calendar, um, whatever it might be that you feel like you meet more than once, you could create that here. Add your description and a time zone. And think what think about what information would be important to share with people about the event. Select the Create Calendar button. Then select Settings and Return to Calendar. Your new calendar will appear under My Calendars. Now let's walk through the steps to add an event to your new calendar. When you plan an event as a group, one person will add the event and then share it with others. Think about why it would help to have one calendar for a group instead of everyone keeping track in their own calendars. Of course, it's easier to keep organized and avoid confusion by having one place to record information instead of several. As well, it improves accuracy. Now you will add your event. View your calendar by month to make it easy to find a date for your event. Select a date in the calendar and a window will appear where you can add the details for the event. Enter the title of the event. Select a title that is short but also explains the purpose. Then edit the event to add additional details. Here you can change the date and duration of the event, add a location, description, and or attachments. Click add time and specify the start and end time of the event. Be mindful if you are scheduling a meeting for people in different time zones. Next, add a description for the event. You can add an agenda if it's a meeting, add a list of materials people need to bring if it's an activity, or provide background on the purpose of the meeting. Take a moment to think of what you would need to add to your event. The event will default to your personal calendar. Be sure to add the event to your group calendar. Click the drop down list at the bottom of the event window and select the new group calendar you created. Make sure to click the save button so your event is created. Once you've completed the calendar details, share it with your group or team. Select the Options button on your group calendar, which appear as the three dots. Select Settings and Share on the menu. Enter an email address for each person you want to share your calendar with. If you already have an email group set up, you can share it with the group instead of sharing it with each individual person in the group. That's especially helpful when you're working with a volunteer group or a sports team. That way you already have that email group set up. Helps with communication and the risk of um, leaving someone out. For each team member, select the appropriate permission settings. If you'd like them to be able to edit the calendar, select Make Changes to Events. If you'd only like them to be able to see events, select See All Event Details. Think through if you want specific people to be able to make changes to the event. If so, their permissions need to be different than those with View Only. Now, let's practice by adding an additional event to the calendar. What is another event or meeting related to your scenario that you might add? Maybe a celebration for the volunteers, or maybe a holiday party. Perhaps you'd like to add a meeting to get help from other people to plan your event, or maybe you want to meet and distribute flyers. Let's select a date and schedule the event. You can even add a link to a video call so your planning committee can video conference rather than meet face-to-face. -face. Remember to invite your group members then save the event. Once you've added your event and at least one other meeting to your calendar, move on to the next step to email your team about event plans. I'll give you just a second to wrap that section up.
Now that we've created a new calendar and created a new event, let's walk through how to receive and accept invitations in Gmail. In a new window or tab, open Gmail to see your inbox. You may have a calendar invitation from work, friends, family, etc. If so, open one of these invitations. Now you can either accept or decline the invitation. And refer to your screen there. Um, you can see where it shows where you can accept yes, maybe, or no. So far in this lesson, you created a new group calendar, shared the calendar, and added a new event. Now you will use Gmail to communicate more details about the calendar and the event. Good communication is critical when working with a group of people. Projects will be more successful if everyone is well informed about the work you are doing together. Great teamwork starts with excellent communication. In Gmail, you will write an email introducing the new calendar that you created, informing the group about the purpose of the new tool. What information do we want to share with the group about the new calendar? You should still be in the Gmail app from the previous step. If you closed it out, select the Google app button in the upper right. Select Gmail. Create a new email by selecting the Compose button. Add the message recipients in the To field. Type the email address of each group member separated by a space or comma, or if you've already established that group, you can put the group in there to email. You can also add recipients as carbon copy or blind copy, and the blind copy is the BCC. For example, if you're running late to work, you might email your manager and um, carbon copy your team members who might be affected by your absence. You might use blind copy when you're emailing people who do not know each other and you want to keep their emails private. This is important when sending business or promotional emails. What might happen if you don't use BCC? If it's a business, you could lose customers for not respecting their privacy and allowing others access to their email addresses. Next, add a subject. The subject should describe the contents of the email. Then, type a message to let your team know why you created a new group calendar. When you finish writing, proofread your message. Fix words underlined in red. You can also run a spell check by clicking the dots in the lower right of the message window and selecting check spelling. The last step in today's workshop is how to create an email signature. An email signature adds a professional look to your emails. It can also add your contact information for the volunteer group or team members. With a signature, you can share important contact information on every email you send so that you do not have to type it in over and over again. What would be some information that would be helpful to share on every email? Perhaps your name, phone number, link to your website, etc. To create a signature, open the settings menu. That is the gear icon in the upper right and then select settings. In this menu, you can also add a profile picture, create an out of office message, or adjust other email preferences. Scroll down to signature, select create new, then name your new signature and select create. Type the text you would want to include as your signature. Keep it short, no more than three or four lines. Include your name, then add your company or school name if appropriate. You might also add a link to a personal, school, or business website. To let people know about an event, you could include a short description or logo. Customize your email signature however you would like. You can change the font, colors, include a hyperlink, or even add an image. When you're finished typing your signature, set the signature defaults. Select the signature you just created. 
Yes, you can create more than one signature. So if you need one for work and then one for personal and then maybe one for your volunteer group, you can select, you can create different ones and then just make sure you select the correct signature when you're doing your emails. You can also have different defaults for new emails versus replied or forwarded emails. Scroll down to the bottom of that pane, save your edits and return to your inbox. Compose a new email. You don't have to sign back into Gmail or your email because your signature is already there. We're almost out of time for today, but I hope you're feeling more comfortable with calendar and Gmail. In this short period of time, you have created a new calendar, shared the calendar, and added a new event. Other types of events you could schedule include club activities, doctor's appointments, weekend events, vacations, etc. In Gmail, you've received and accepted an invitation, created an email signature, composed a new email, and replied to other emails. Google Calendar and Gmail are not the only apps that Google offers. You might want to explore forms to create surveys and collect feedback from others, slides to make presentations to share with a group, Google Meet, which provides easy to join video calls to connect face to face with team members around the world. Meet works with an internet connection or sites to create your own website for a business or your organization. We have barely scratched the surface of all the features that Google Applications offers. I hope you've been thinking about ways you can use these digital tools in your own work and personal life. Should you have any questions or need personalized help for your business, you can use the QR code or website on this slide to schedule a one-on-one -on -one session with one of our digital trainers. Thank you so much for attending today and please check out our other training videos. Have a wonderful day.